Hello. Good afternoon, morning, evening. I we are. Hello, Susan. How are you this evening? Welcome. Uh, it's, uh, we are not very many this afternoon. I think it's going to be micro teaching in uh, trio this um, uh, evening because it's only Billy, me, and Susan. Lovely to see Hello, you here. How are you? <laughs> I guess uh, we should wait for a little while until, let's see, if, uh, some more of the 30 people that enroll decide to attend or not. I think, Susan, you've been with us for the three sessions now, and uh, you know what it is all about. Uh, we're getting ready for the um, micro-teaching in pairs with um, Dr. Nelly Dutch, and our big day will be actually on the 21st of December. But meanwhile, to get our practice and uh, to thank Dr. Nelly as well for her opportunity in uh, launching this uh, online course with three live sessions, and it is our last uh, session this afternoon. So we were um, hoping to be able to give a bit of a summary of all the uh, issues that we've been tackling for the last sessions that passed and uh, wrap it all up and uh, give a bit more tips. So, um, meanwhile, everybody else is coming. I guess we could start with um, the next slide, which is a bit of uh, today's highlights on one hand and uh, also a bit of a summary of what we've been doing, which is surviving through face-to-face -face lessons for a couple of months, combined with our virtual classroom about which uh, Billy talked to you uh, last uh, Monday. Sorry, I couldn't be here with you that day. And through collaborative project blogging challenges. Before we actually move on to the uh, next slide and focus on what we are sharing with you this evening, I think we should remind everybody, which is Susan actually, that we are uh, recording this live session, that everything is being recorded, and keeping our fingers crossed for it to work, because last Monday, with IQ got stuck, uh, so it's still in progress. I already got in touch with the people at with IQ, but uh, they are still trying to fix it. So if we move a bit uh, further up, what we were trying to challenge you on this evening from Spain is e-learning uh, challenges, digital challenges to accomplish in order to be able to build a digital project, an overall digital project. So, um, Susan, I think I'm going to give you a... Uh, hi, Halina, welcome. But the else is coming this evening in Spain. I guess it is um, morning where you are, Halina. Hi, how are you? Uh, we were about to start challenge, uh, challenging you. What we did here is uh, how to on challenge. We've been sending our learners on e-challenges last year for a couple of months, and we would like to know if you are ready to be sent yourself on an e-challenge today. So we were looking forward to brainstorming with you today. And this is the question. If you had to send your learners on an e-challenge, uh, taking into account that the e-challenge is aimed at building an overall digital project, what e-challenges would you propose your learners? And for that, what we are going to do is give you writing permissions, Susan and Helena, and move to this whiteboard that we've prepared for you in advance and do a bit of brainstorming. If you had to uh, build up e-challenges, if you had to propose your learners with e-challenges, what kind of challenges are you thinking of? So the whiteboard is yours. And uh, Susan and Halina, you have writing permissions. Billy, of course, has writing permissions because he's co-presenter. And I myself have uh, writing permissions as well. So. Um, we are looking forward to reading your e-challenges. You ready to write, Susan, Halina? Ready to write? Just say yes or thumbs up if you are ready. Let me think. Yes, Halina is thinking. Let's uh, think of e-challenges. Yes, Billy, you are ready. So the whiteboard is oh. on. You start with an e-challenge. Uh, 
for your students now? Um, my one of my e challenge for my students actually, I'm I'm working with them now is to tweet in English. Hey. So because they love social networking, so um, I got them to as an as an incentive in the classroom, and I think I told you about this, Dr. Garcia, is that every time that they tweet, they have to tweet four times a week in English about a certain topic. And uh, if they tweet four times, they get a positive. So that's, that's a challenge uh, to tweet in English. Um, use, uh, instead of just tweeting about their favorite football team or who broke up with who, they're trying, they're uh, tweeting about topics that um, we're talking about in classroom, like the environment, relationships, new technology, being a teenager. So um, that was a good e challenge. Those are challenges. Actually, those are challenges as well, Billy. Uh, all those things that you are talking about in class are digital challenges as well, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, so uh, that was one of the. That's one of the eight challenges we're, we're we're constantly working with now, and we'll continue throughout the next trimester and the final trimester. For example, in my school. Excellent. Yeah, we've got another e challenge already on the whiteboard. Use Google Translate and create a voki and send it to a global partner. Great. Yes, great challenge. That's a very big challenge. Actually, Susan and uh, Halina, if uh, you like, I can give you mic control as well, as we are so few this uh, evening. And I'm, I'm already passing voice control to you. So if you'd like to explain the e-challenges that you are writing on the whiteboard. So uh, for example, using the trans Later on creating a voce, which should be the aim of that? Well, objectives are uh, aimed to uh, your uh, students to achieve. Hello, Susan, Halina, you've got voice now. Start a blog and write posts, of course. Yes, that's a great challenge as well. Yes, more challenges that you are thinking aims. Yes, you're writing your aims for the Google Translator and create a voce. I guess. I've already given you mic uh, permission, Susan and Halina, if you'd like to talk. If you don't want to talk, uh, no, no issues, right? Yes, you uh, you already have the mic. Uh, I, I can hear you. Hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, this takes a little getting used to. Um, <laughs> you have to be careful what you say, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like video as well? I can give you video. <laughs> Uh, no, too early in the morning for that one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, well, I don't know. That thought just came into my mind this morning uh, about the uh, the. I've been thinking about creating a Voki and exchanging, doing a, a Voki exchange with a global partner, just to build global camaraderie. But um, I just thought of using the Google Translator because if you don't speak a second language like I don't, you might not know if your Voki is coming out right. Okay. And uh, so it's almost like you need you need somebody to proof it for you before you send it because you would hate to, you know, have it messed up. So I really don't know how doable this e-challenge is. But for you, with English as, you know, English and Spanish, it would be it's great. It's doable, I think. It's quite doable. You would uh, maybe send your your original text with the Google translated text and see how that could be fixed or if there's any fixing. Um, and then you can send, and then you could create the Voki after someone could have checked your work. Um, if you want to okay. set up a global challenge with another school in another country, for example, Right. See, I've worked a lot with Voki, and I know that um, in English you have to use commas and periods in places that you normally wouldn't mm -hmm. for it to sound right. Okay. And so it it gets confusing because almost what you what you teach the children to do that is correct, you kind of have to undo it and then redo it. <laughs> And so it's a little confusing, but because otherwise the Vokis will just ramble and run together. Um, um, but so I'm wondering how that is in Spanish. You know, they, do you have they to ramble? <laughs> it's one run on sentence. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, but um, 
um, do you, um, last week we talked about um, another uh, voice uh, creator, kind of like um, avatar creator. It's called a telegami, and actually you can re you can record yeah. your voice there, and um, and you can also write text, and it reads quite well. Like it pauses, and there's when there's a comma, there's a comma. When there's a, when there's a full stop, there's a full stop. So um, that's a, a, a tool that um, that could be a, a, maybe a better substitute than, than Boki. Great. I'm gonna. I'm going to have to try that now. Is that um, you could use that on a PC? It wasn't just for uh, it, um, mobile. Right, either on your mobile or on your uh, tablet. If you have a tablet. Okay, not, not yet. Almost. almost um, you can't. You can't. Use, unfortunately, you can't use it on a uh, on your desktop. It's. Okay, um, all right. That's, that's why I haven't tried Okay, it. well, yeah, there's, okay, I was going to put the link. Um, but even, what kind of mobile, what kind of mobile do you have? What kind of cell do you have? Um, not, not a smartphone, okay. so it, it wouldn't work. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, um. I'll just have to wait until I get my tablet. Well, um, maybe your mom or your dad has a, a smartphone <laughs> or, or a friend of yours will let you download that application. It's free. And it's it's quite good to um to kind of get your kids' attention uh, when it comes to e challenges um and uh, it's just it's really creative I, I I try to use it as much as possible um and there's a tutorial from the previous session on how to use uh or how to create excuse me uh, a gammy from telegammy yeah, you did a really good job Billy it was it was really Thank you, neat. Billy is very talented very talented indeed. Yes. Actually, last year, talking about Boki, we had a collaborative project with another school in Spain. We tried th these uh, e-challenges and e-projects that we are sharing um, uh, are part of uh, several uh, problem-based learning um, challenges, actually, that we put into practice last year at the university to try and bridge uh, between university and primary CLIL teachers, try to get uh, universe, uh, future university, uh, uh, university students who are going to be future CLIL teachers in primary education with the actual primary teachers and students. And we started um, a project about Platero and um, uh, arts as well. Uh, I, I'm trying to um, look for the link uh, where the project was actually. And we did um, an example with a Voki. And other students from a primary school in Spain continued their vocis and they simulated a meeting between uh, the actual character of Platero in Spanish literature with El Greco and uh, the painting, right? Because it was an anniversary in Spain at the moment, last year. Ooh. So that was a way to get global connect and use Voki as well uh, with Global Partners. I'll try and look for the link for you in case you, you'd like to have a look and uh, uh, see if you see something similar what you are proposing here. Right, um, any other uh, e-challenges uh, that you'd like to uh, propose here? I mean, there are, I suppose, thousands and uh, thousands of e-challenges that we could take in class and propose to our students. I think it is also important when proposing any challenge to be a bit updated with current affairs, uh, I guess. And and then uh, to think that any challenge should take students to accomplish goals and to be part of an overall project. If we are thinking of of building a digital project in class, I think that that's essential when we are proposing any challenge. Um, have the goals of that uh, challenge in mind what we want them to achieve. I don't know if you agree with me, Billy, Susan, Helena, what do you think? I agree. Same here. <laughs> I agree. I was just thinking for current, uh, you know, the, like a peace project, you know, through the GAMI, or, um, you know, where each, you know, each okay. school would contribute, um, you know, whatever their idea for a peace project would be. I mean, I've read several good ones. Not, none come to mind right now, just because it's a little early for me. But 
haven't had my coffee yet. <laughs> right. Anyway, uh, so if if you while you are having your coffee, if you like, we can go back to uh, the next uh, uh, slide and start having a look at the steps building a digital project challenge by challenge. Uh, we have um, envisaged steps uh, for that, and we'd like to share with you uh, one by one. So, Billy, if you'd like to um, take it from here, and, and while you are uh, explaining and sharing, I'll have a look at my links and see if I can share that book with you. Okay. okay. Um, well, obviously, when you have an e-challenge, one of the first things you should do is create a sort of a mind map. Um, and of course, since we're 21st century teachers, we want to use new technologies whenever possible. Um, there are some great ways to um, do this activity. Uh, for example, there are several um, websites which you can use. And right now, I'll give you um, two links. One is called MindMup with, um, with a U. And I'm going to put the link right now here at the bottom. Okay, that's one link, which is quite cool. Um, so you can use um, mind maps to create, uh, uh, to develop an idea. And then this one, uh, text mind map, it's uh, www.text2mindmap.com. And actually, that's quite, this is even more fun, I think, because you get to move it around, like um, the, okay, the, uh, you actually get to pull the threads of a mind map, which is more, um, uh, gets the kids more, uh, get, it gets uh, the kids' attention uh, more than anything else. Uh, for our e project that I worked with, uh, with Dr. Garcia back in, the, in, in February, March, and April, uh, we decided to use a tool called uh, Pearl Tree. Um, we used a, um, a mind mapping tool called Pearl Trees, a Pearl Tree, excuse me, and um, um, basically mind map. Um, and uh, ProTree.com, I should put that up there, um, ProTree, um, and it, again, it just lets you um, develop more ideas through the project. Also, I found out what I've done in the past also is that uh, with my high school students, they have to present uh, oral presentations in English. So every time they send me one, and I, I don't proofread it, I let them work, it, work themselves out because they need to know how to proofread themselves. Um, and uh, what I do, I just put them through the Pearl Tree, and then it just expands there as well. So if you uh, check out, you can uh, upload uh, obviously a mind map and also um, PowerPoint presentations onto Pearl Trees, and um, that way uh, you have more uh, a variety to 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 do those kinds of things. Um, as I said, um, okay, great. Um, the one that is the most, I guess, the most appealing visually uh, would be um, the, the the second link I sent I sent you right now, which was the the press the text to mindmap.com. It's just if you if you play with it a little bit, I'm actually playing with it right now. <laughs> the 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 strings pull and it's very it, it, again, uh, it just gets gets your attention. So mind mapping a very important part for e project and just a great way to organize yourself because you might have some very lofty ideas, but then when you bring all those ideas down to earth, can I get these ideas to be accomplished? Can I make these things happen? So that's, that's very, very important. Um, taking into account, for example, our project, taking into account our, our project for Dr. Garcia, uh, we wanted to do a lot of things, but then when we actually did a mind map, we're like, okay, this is what, what we can do, what's viable for us. Uh, to work with and, and uh, to, to do. Um, so, um, again, amazing, uh, a great way to, to just organize your, your projects. Thank you, Billy. Thank you very much. Um, here you are, this list that I've just passed on to you uh, has all the uh, tools that Billy has been mentioning about mind mapping. And uh, I think that is essential to start with uh, uh, mapping the project out because that, that uh, gives a uh, a nice draft about what steps to follow when accomplishing the goals, when building the different challenges, uh, and to have uh, maybe a more successful icon. 
So that's why we started with uh, mind maps here. Mind maps are not really only for uh, challenges, but you could use a mind map for any other kind of activity, even uh, uh, for yourself, for your own uh, uh, teaching plans, uh, schedules, and all that. Even at the beginning of the year, you can mind map the uh, aims of the whole school year, uh, I guess. Oh, you use them, Helena. Would you like to tell us about um, about your experience? I can give you your voice back, if you like, and uh, and we can listen uh, to your experience. Just let us know if you if you want your voice. Oh, you're back. Great. So, we'd love to hear you. If you can, Susan, just... Uh, Thumbs up. Yes, you can hear us. Uh, you've got uh, your voice as well, uh, Susan. So if you'd like to um, get in and say something, we are all ears. Okay. So we, you can hear us, but we cannot hear you. So anyway, now, now uh, if you'd like to move to the next step, um, when uh, uh, we started setting up all, all these digital challenges, I thought that it was... Uh, essential to integrate the challenges and the uh, projects in everything we did in class. So the learning each challenges have to be the core of everything we did in class. Everything uh, uh, was meant to aim at accomplishing the challenges and accomplishing the project. So that was the uh, second step that I thought of when uh, planning all this. And part of it was also the importance of teaching them to teach. Um, teach students to teach, exactly as we are doing here. Uh, teaching together, okay? Collaborate and learn together. For, uh, for me, that was uh, the most important part of it all, and that was what I tried to get into my students as well, so they could also go to their lessons and uh, do their part, do their bit with their own students. I've brought a couple of examples of different uh, challenges integrated into class activities that we um, accomplished um, while we were doing these uh, big overall projects. And one of them was um, an origami storytelling that I thought was very creative and so uh, was quite original on the part of the students. This e challenge of um, teaching others how to uh, do an origami story was part of the overall e project Hail the World with the Stories that we've got here. So uh, I'm to play for you now this origami storytelling digital challenge that one of the students uh, produced uh, as part of the Hail the World with the Stories project. That will. See if we can uh, listen to it uh, clearly. And there was a king called Nicholas who had a beautiful crown. But one day he lost his crown, so he started looking and looking for it, but he couldn't find his crown. So he decided to go to a lake and ask some ducks if they had seen his crown, but they hadn't. So he decided to go to a forest and asked a fox if, they, if he had seen his crown, but he hadn't. So the fox told the King Nicholas that he had already eaten a dove. So he opened his mouth and now he asked the dove if he, if he had seen his crown, but the dove hadn't. So he went to his sailing boat and he looked for his crown there but in his sailing boat he couldn't find his crown so he went deep inside the sea and he asked some fishes but the fishes hadn't seen his crown so he decided to go to the space and ask some stars if they had seen his crown but the stars hadn't seen his crown. So the King Nicholas decided to spend some days in his fishing boat and there he couldn't find his crown. So after some days he decided to ask a policeman in order to know if he had seen his crown. 
But the policeman told that he hadn't he seen his crown. But he knew a witch called Daisy who traveled in an ocean liner. And the witch Daisy used to keep the things that people lost in a huge box. And there, in the box, the, the king class and the witch Daisy could find a oh, she, She's great, isn't she? I thought that was absolutely great that she came up with that uh, lovely e-challenge. Uh, yes, she is very talented for storytelling. Um, all the e-challenges that this girl, Laura, she is called, she's living in England, by the way, at the moment, um, teaching. Uh, already um, in the kindergarten school and um, this um, e-challenge uh, is part of their e-project Hail the World with the Stories whose link you've got there. The other e-learning project Art and Music in Jars I haven't got any um, uh, actual videos uh, at YouTube, which we could, so we cannot really play any videos uh, in the live session as MZQ does not allow any other sources. But um, I can uh, pass the link of actual e-learning project, the overall e-learning project, just in case you'd like to go and uh, have a look, because uh, the e-challenges that the um, learners at the Arts and Music in Jars e-project did were teaching students to use technology, to use tools, apps, software, and what they did was record tutorials, video tutorials uh, for other uh, teachers or other students or other people uh, that wanted to use them. So that's another way to teach others to teach as well, as we are doing um, here today and as we will be doing with Dr. Nelly at the uh, micro teaching in pairs. So I thought that was very nice. Now, uh, as you see, um, we've got further steps uh, for the uh, building up of challenges. So I'm uh, passing uh, it uh, to Billy now, who is going to tell you about the rest of the steps. All right. Uh, well, uh, step three, creativity is the challenge, right? Uh, how do you match with creativity? Well, um, in our experience, uh, play to your strengths um, because, uh, for example, uh, with Laura, she was obviously an excellent story storyteller and very creative when it came to actually coming up with this origami story. Uh, we decided uh, our group for our e-challenge was that we were better at writing stories as opposed to performing them uh, within live videos. Um, and you can you can see that from our uh, blog at, um, at Brookby Library you can see that at the bottom. Um, there aren't that many videos. There are set, there are several audio clips, um, and there's several books which we uh, wrote in, in, in the challenge. But there weren't any videos of us actually reading books or performing books or doing any sort of cool stuff like uh, origami books. So we definitely played to our strength. Excuse me, Billy. You did a video uh, at the very uh, well. You did a couple. Actually, recorded a couple of video clips, a trailer for the uh, project, yeah. and <laughs> you went global. Right. Well, you went and connected with other schools in Spain, exactly. and you recorded a video clip uh, asking uh, primary students what kind of mobile library they would like in their school. We, we did. We did. We did that, of course, uh, which was. Thank you, Dr. Garcia, which was our uh, next step, which is the next step, Go Global Connect. Um, through Dr. Garcia's class and our QRE project, uh, we connected um, with one school um, in Murcia, and uh, uh, they asked us, oh, actually, we asked them um, what they would like to see in a virtual library, because that's what we created with the uh, Brooklyn Library. And um, and you can also, uh, there, yeah, there is with the Blog Maniatico, uh, Blog Maniacos, um, and um, that's a, what that was one way we went global um, for uh, that challenge. And um, obviously, we um, we wanted to share everything that we did. So that's again uh, very very important. I think I, I have said this many many times on how we can um, 
go and share things. Do you have the the trailer, Dr. Okay. <laughs> I've got. Uh, I've got. Well, I can I can uh, ha get the uh, trailer in in a bit. Ah. But what I've got ready for you to watch is your questions right. for going global. Okay. The questions you made the primary students, mm -hmm. uh, and then we can have a look at the answers. Okay. There you go. Right. My name is Jose Luis. I'm from Spain. And I'm going to ask you a question. For example, if you were going to edit or, or to publish a mobile library, what design would you like for the web page, for example? Hi, my name is Billy and I'm from Houston, Texas. And I would like to ask you what contents and resources would you like to find on an application? Hi, my name is John. I'm from Iowa City, Iowa. And I would like to know, if you would like to click on a word, would you like the explanation or translation to appear? Hi, my name is Jacob. I'm from Chicago. And I would like to know, what kinds of books do you like to read? Hello, it is me again. Uh, for example, what kind of books would you like to find in the library? Yeah, again. Um, can you give us some suggestions about what, we, about what you would like to read? Uh, for example, how would you do it? My next question is, what is your favorite part about the library that you already have? Hello again. I would like to know what apps do you use in your class? And also, what apps would you like to use? Well, um, it's me again. Uh, do you have internet at home? Um, I would like to ask, what kind of book genre, what kind of type of books would you like to read? I'd also like to know, what don't you want to read about? And I'd really like to know, would you like to be in a book club online? <laughs> um, next to that, I'd like to ask you, what APPs would you like to use? Apps. And finally, I would like to ask you what apps do you usually use uh, to read? Thank you. Bye. Bye. Excellent. I love it. I just love it. But uh, just before Billy goes uh, over uh, the uh, next steps, uh, I um, like you to know that apart from going global, they got their answers back. The kids uh, from this uh, school in uh, Murcia, no, it was Alicante actually, uh, yeah, in, uh, uh, they were uh, primary students. Uh, the teacher who was l uh, leading the project in this other primary school uh, was not an English teacher, so um, she had to learn English from her own students so that the students could answer the Book Me Library uh, boys in English, right? And they are primary students. I'd like you to have just a quick, um, just a quiz, a quick look about at some of your answers. So just some, okay? I promise. There we go. Hello, I'm Emily. Hello to Jose Luis and Billy, uh, John and Jacob. There you go Hello, from the beginning. I'm Nina. Hello, I'm Emily. Hello to Jose Luis and Billy, uh, John and Jacob. I'm going to answer Jose Luis's question. Question one. If you had a web page of a mobile library, what design would you give it? These are the questions of the class. One. You have <laughs> you have got to see well the tops of the books. Two, it's got to have a frame. Three, that the books are ordered with colours of the line and all with the types of books. Five, the web page has got to have light colours for little children and dark colours for adults. Six, the books have to be classified with the ages. Seven, that they have to be on shelves. This is the second question. What would you like to find on this app? These are the answers of the class. 
a like or a dislike button, two, a help button, three, an unfoldable tab with a summary of the book to see if I like it before I download it, four, a place to leave comments, five, that the download should be free, six, for there to be two shelves, one for the books I like and one for the books I don't. Seven, for it to say how many people have read every book. I hope that this has helped you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Move your lap. Um. Move your lap. <laughs> They are awesome, and uh, and uh, you can hear her teach their teacher in Spanish because obviously she cannot speak any English, so she was learning, um, and I think um, that is also part of another step when building any challenge. But that is in the next slide, so I will um, pass it back to Billy. Oh no, thank you, though. I that that's great. Um, step four of Global and Connect. Um, up, up, uh, Dr. Garcia obviously challenged us with our e-challenge, um, and one of her one of her big pushes was to try to connect with other schools or with other projects uh, within uh, within Spain or even outside of Spain. Um, and the important thing, obviously, is uh, uh, to yeah, well, obviously go global with connect, but always you know share what you what you produce um, for uh, in the digital content content um, and. Join other, other challenges. Well, um, Dr. Garcia, one day she came to class and she said, You all will be presenting your e projects on Saturday morning. Be, get ready. And we're like, What? Um, so we, uh, we did um, a, round, a, a virtual round table conference where each of us got to explain our projects. Um, there were eight projects in total. Um, and uh, although it wasn't necessarily a challenge, for some other groups, it was a challenge. But uh, it was a great way for us to get some publicity uh, for our particular project. And uh, on a more personal uh, level, Dr. Garcia also told me um, last year, last school year, to work with a school in Valencia, also in Spain. Um, and uh, we joined, uh, or um, our, excuse me, our, our Brooklyn Library blog uh, joined up with uh, that uh, sixth grade high school, if I remember correctly, sixth grade uh, primary. It's called a primary uh, on how to create a story using uh, digital resources to um, to explain that. Um, so that was a great way to join just another challenge. And obviously, this uh, doing this right now is another challenge that we can also uh, work on and work with. Uh, so those are some of the steps we can do to uh, create each other, to keep working on each challenges. Uh, yes, uh, uh, thank you, Billy. Actually, I'm, I'm uh, passing the link to all the um, projects that we joined, to all the other challenges that we joined, because they were also uh, building their own digital projects. So we were building ours at the same time. The aims were similar. The objectives were similar. So um, we wanted to connect. And... Uh, we used our e-challenges, integrated them into their e-challenges, and built a connected e-project all together. We also did that through Twitter, which is our uh, social favorite social network, uh, the top social network that we use to share and connect with others as well. And um, last but not least, I think it is important to wrap it all up and summarize uh, the uh, actual steps when building an e-challenge. Don't lose the goals out of your sight. Goals are important when you are setting an e-challenge. It is for learners to accomplish goals, um, to learn together. But they must also be given their freedom. I think they must be provided with their freedom. Let them be independent and autonomous autonomous learning. They should be the main roles of their own learning, I think. Uh, and if you are a teacher, you are a magician. 
So I think when building an e-project and building e-learning challenges, um, it's got to be magic. And teaching is magic, learning together is magic. So the more magic, for me, the better. And uh, of course, evaluate. Different ways to evaluate e-challenges. Uh, not only uh, with a single figure, which is not really uh, representative at all of what they are learning, but encourage them to do peer-to-peer -peer assessment and use different type of tools to evaluate. Like, okay, I don't know if you've ever used rubrics. I guess uh, you have. Uh, so in order to finish, uh, I've, uh, I've prepared another whiteboard for you to do a bit more of brainstorming on rubrics. What are the essentials of rubrics? Uh, what uh, rubrics should have? Um, so um, you still have writing permissions. Susan, Halina, Billy, of course. So if you'd like to fill the whiteboard with uh, uh, tips on what is important when uh, building a rubric or give us uh, your experience on uh, using rubrics. We are all ears and we are looking forward to reading your um, tips. I don't know, Billy, you want to say something else about that? Okay, they're already writing. Great. No, I'm trying to be with you. <laughs> oh, you are right. Uh, perfect. Yes. Positive words. Yes, they should be positive feedback rubrics. Yeah, totally agree with that. Yeah. I'd like to know, when you're building a rubric, um, how many levels do you usually um, place in a rubric? Four levels, three levels, five levels, more than five? You only know rubrics from Google Docs. Oh, that's very interesting. You build a rubric in Google Docs. I'm going to give you Mike again, uh, just in case it's uh, working for you. Perfect. Yes. Can you know? Yeah. yeah. And uh, so I'm just familiar with the rubrics from Google. Uh, um, I'm just working on it right now and trying to learn how to use them. So this is for me just the start with the rubrics. And um, it's about the Nellis project, about this micro teaching thing. And I'm having uh, problems to figure it out. But that's the start for me. Okay. And how you do that? Well, um, Billy, you tell us if you use rubrics yourself. I, I use the rubrics with you, but I want to know if you are using rubrics now. Um, well, um, since I, I am a language assistant, so I technically don't... I'm a language assistant uh, in a school in, in Madrid, so uh, the, the grading is not part of my, my responsibilities, but um, uh, apart uh, from being a language assistant, I do have one English, oral English class in my high school where I work at, and um, we have, we're trying to develop a rubric now before the school year ends, and um, my teacher, my, my other co-teacher, she's really adamant about writing one out, like point one, point two, point three, and I'm trying to be like, let's do it digitally so we can send it out to the kids, they can see it, they can have some feedback on it, if they can agree or not agree on it. Um, and as, as far as uh, next week, next Monday, we'll sit together and we'll actually work on a specific online rubric to use for the kids, for our oral English class, because um, they have an oral English presentation coming up, which we have to grade. And I don't want to be like, oh, I think this group gets a seven. No, no, I want them to see why they have a seven. Um, but my partner, she's like, no, let's write it down. Uh, and at the, on the, you know, during the presentation, we can see what note we can, what mark we can give them. I'm not sure how comfortable I'm, I'm with that because they, the kids are, uh, they want to know why, why they get a four instead of a seven, or why they get a five instead of a six or whatever. So rubrics, um, in my opinion, are very good because it gives, um, um, the grading is constant, so from the teacher's point, and the students can see why the, the teacher gave them a four or a five or even a ten. So it's it's very um it's very constant in, in, in that aspect to use rubrics. Um, and again, it's very specific 
what the teacher is looking for, what, I, for example, what I will look for in next week's presentations, and what they and what I'm expecting from them um, when when it comes to grading them. So I'll let you know how it comes out next week with my with my coworker <laughs> if she if I can twist her arm to do a digital <laughs> rubric instead of a paper rubric. That's enough session. All right. You think there were needs only, uh, mostly, for evaluation, I, right? Yeah, for evaluation, yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Alright. Uh, do the kids like the rubric? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's yeah. quite fair. Don't you agree, Dr. Garcina? You can yeah. see why why they have a, again, if you, if, for example, um, again, it's an oral presentation, so one of the points, uh, they get they get half a point if they speak in English, and they get the full point if they commit less than five mistakes uh, in the in the presentation. So it's a twenty five to thirty minute presentation, five students, and so within that time, um, if they commit less than five mistakes, and it's given that half a point, more than five mistakes, full point, less than five mistakes, and they see that clearly, and so there's no like, oh, I think you have a half a point here, no. You have either half a point or a point, for example. All mm -hmm. right. No, so it's perfect. It works. It's Dr. perfect. Again, with Dr. Garcia, we used it in her, in her class, and it just, it, it, for us, in my opinion, it just works great. You see why you're marking so, why, you're, why you have that mark, and you can see how you can improve on that mark if the teacher lets you improve on it. Yeah. All right. Sorry. It's about the general, yeah, general educational system, and uh, it is huge discussion about evaluation and uh, grades and what is the education really about and what is education really for. Because in Poland we have just things upside down and the kids would learn for the grades, mm -hmm. not for the knowledge. So I'm very careful with this evaluation thing because really it's just very bad at the moment in Polish schools, they do learn for points, for credits, not for the knowledge. And this is, you know, we need to find some something in the middle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that, that, is, uh, that is happening in Spain. Uh, uh, unfortunately, in my opinion, it is still happening in Spain quite often. Uh, maybe because the uh, assessment has been um, focused on figures, one, two, three, four, five, up from 1 to 10, that is the, uh, the most usual or has been the most usual way to evaluate people. But um, in, in, in the same sense, we have found out that evaluating people with numbers uh, does not really match what they have learned, does not really prove what and how they have learned it. And there are more uh, things to evaluate, the process, how they learn, what they learn, when they learn, where they learn, and that is not easily evaluated with a figure. However, with a rubric, you can actually set up, if you plan the rubric very well, and there are online tools like RubyStar, which is the, the one that I'm just giving you, if you plan it very well and you are very sure of the goals you want your learners to achieve, uh, of the skills you want them to uh, acquire while doing that challenge or activity, or while they are building a project, then you must um, back up your assessment. You must tell them why you are assessing them like that and why not. And, and so I think the rubric must have very clear what goals you are aiming at and if they have actually achieved the goals or not, and what competencies and skills they have acquired and if they have actually acquired them or not. And in that way, when at, at least they see feedback and they see uh, why they have excellent or why they have poor or why you have assessed them with fair or good and I think it also helps them improve and it also helps them realize like where they must improve. Uh, yeah, I understand, sure, and That's I agree. But it has to be done very, very That's specific right. way. Very, very carefully yeah. planned. Actually, well, I passed you the link of our online classroom where you have all the assignments. And the pattern as well, if you want to go and have a look. Um, 
I must admit that I've already seen mistakes in the rubric. Uh, I, uh, I, I suppose you never do anything perfect. Um, so when I reopened the classroom for these years, uh, master's degree in February, I will change some of the um, criteria in the rubrics. Yeah. We we'll always have to learn. That's things. right. Always <laughs> learning. Always learning. That's the best. I would like to ask you something because I, you probably remember me. Maybe not. I am. I am a Polish teacher, and I teach foreigners who come to Poland to study in Polish. And I have very many students from Spain. Mm -hmm. Very many. And um, yeah, they come to my university to uh, to study. And um, yeah, and I always ask people about online learning, and it was really. Uh, very irritating for me because I never got the answer, yes, we do, we have e-learning, we have online learning. And no, they would say no, no. And here I am talking to you, you are from Spain and you, and you are doing such a wonderful job here. And where are the students? <laughs> At uh, the university where I teach, uh, they've got no choice uh, with me. <laughs> they've got no choice because I teach uh, ICT and CLIL there. So I mean, technology is the core, is the basis. So it's very to me. It's very interesting. So I have now, I have one answer to my <laughs> students. Well, I will be talking. I, uh, Helena, when I, I used to teach only English uh, some years ago, uh, my major is English, and I used to teach English in a state-run, well, several state-run uh, run schools of languages, actually. And I also did e-learning with um, English, English teaching. But that was not very uh, frequent, I must admit. And it is still not very usual, unfortunately. Yes. Mm -hmm. But is a, that's a big question mark, e-learning and online learning. And, uh, you know, e-learning is, is popular nowadays in Poland. But to me, it's not the way people should learn language. Because e-learning is just really without the teacher. There's no connection with the teacher. And students are not very crazy about it. It's just testing. Right, yeah. Unfortunately, in languages here as well, e-learning is testing, unfortunately. Uh, I must admit that uh, every time I've used online learning, uh, I've used it blended. Uh, well, actually, that's yes. why the title of these uh, sessions, uh, because I've always had face-to-face -face right. sessions, compulsory face-to-face -face sessions, and then the rest of the learning was online, so that is really blended learning, not fully online. Always. I sometimes use with a Hue platform for my lectures, so they come and we, we, we just use the with a Hue because I love the tools on with a Hue. But this is blended. And during the lecture, I would schedule the class and we go there all together. I have even recordings from the students from Spain. I could show you. <laughs> it's on my YouTube, the recordings from the meetings, and you will find very many Spanish students. But that's so nice. That's so nice. But your job is just absolutely awesome. And and how many students are involved in your project? How, how many billion? Exactly. How many were we last year? Over 20? No, more than that. About more than 30, that. 30, 35 maybe. There were five per, five people per group, five times eight. That's at the mastery, right? Yeah, at the mastery. Yeah. Um, for example, the that small e-challenge I was talking about earlier with my high school kids, um, I have we have two classes, 18 and 15. So 30 kids are, um, it's, again, it's voluntary. So the, Usually I have every, it's every two weeks, and I have, out of the 30, about 20 participate actively, and they, again, as I said, they have to tweet four times a week, and, um, uh, So you are educating new generation. Yes. Yeah, because my 
trying to are like university level students, so they didn't have it yet. <laughs> but that's the Nice. It's absolutely wonderful what you're doing Thank here. You. And we, I, I, we love it. We love it. Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, I, I suppose that that is all for today. Thank you very much, Susan and Helena, for coming. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was absolutely Thank wonderful. You. Thank you're you. Most welcome. Our pleasure. We'll be back uh, on the 21st of, September, of December with uh, Dr. Nelly and. Uh, well, we'll see you around anyway, meanwhile. Okay. Uh, we'll log, uh, bye hi, bye. Helena. Um, Susan, a log is needed for that link. Uh, no, uh, the, uh, if you've never been registered at um, edu20.org, um, you will need to register first and then uh, enroll in the class using the password that I've just given you. Just enroll in the class using the password I've just given you and... Um, and that's it. It's all ready. Anyway, if you need any, pro if you have any issues, um, Susan, with that, um, and you have any problems um, enrolling or whatever, just uh, get in touch. That's my email uh, for you to get in touch uh, at whatever time. I'm usually quite connected, as you may have already guessed. Anyway, okay. So, Billy, thank you very much. Uh, we'll uh, keep in touch anyway. We've got lots of things to prepare for 21st. And um, our pleasure again. We'll see you around. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.